What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the best day of the year, Vintage Cube Day. Uh, we are done with Dominaria. We are in the queue for Vintage Cube. And uh, before we get started, I'd like to mention that I don't actually know uh, many of the changes. I haven't looked at the change log. The, the extent of my change knowledge is from what people have been saying in the chat so far. And um, yeah, so it's kind of a surprise to us. So I'm just going to look it over. I'm going to see what's in here. And uh, we'll, we'll go for we'll 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 shoot from the hip, as they say in the Western world. But uh, we have to wait for this bad boy to fill first. Seven. One more. Let's do it. Cube tastic. Uh, I've opened zero Teferis and zero Lyras in about 55, 60 drafts. Oh, got that. Oh, look. Look at that. Our first Lyra. It's the first Lyra we've ever opened, and it's in the Vintage Cube. Oh, God. The ma magic, you have a sweet sense of humor, my friend. Amazing. Amazing. The meme value is through the roof already, and we're not even... We haven't gotten a second pack yet. How is Chupacabra the pick here? We have Channel. We have Ancient Tomb. <laughs> Matthew Ori, come on, buddy. I feel like it's Channel. Channel's just very, very good. I also never mind being green, but I don't know. It is the Vintage Cube, not the Legacy Cube, so there is power in here. I think Channel's a little stronger than Ancient Tomb, especially if you... But it does force you to build around things like Ulamog. Either way, I think I'm okay with that. All right, we're going to be channeling. I wanna channel with you. We're channeling. Oh, still no, still. I was waiting for the art to load. Still no art, huh? Sounds good. Okay, we got a cast down. That's interesting. Uh, Wall of Roots is fine. I mean, we're we're like we're we're gonna make our selections based on the fact that we're a blue card first, so or a green card rather, double green card. I don't hate Wall of Roots. Uh, Gristleband is great, but it's not necessarily going to go with channel unfortunately yeah because then you're at a point where you have green green black 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 and you're only actually adding two mana with channel so I guess it's a turn six gristle brand but uh, you know cast down actually does not seem that great here like one two th three three of the creatures can't even be hit in this cube MTG Calvert thank you so much for the sub really appreciate it I'm just going to take the Wall of Roots and stick with the green for now. It's not the most powerful card in the pack by any stretch of the imagination. But it does do a thing that we want it to do. Oh, History of Benalia. That's pretty sweet. Look at that. We've already opened... We've literally opened more more Money Mythics rares from Dominaria in, in our first three packs of Vintage Cube than we have in 60 packs, 60 drafts of Dominaria. That's, that's a statistic right there for you guys. That's a funny statistic. Is there a place where I can see all the changes to the cube since winter 2017? Uh, yeah, you can probably check it out on Magic Online, or Magic the web, the Magic website, I would assume. And by assume, I mean, yeah, it's there. You just have to look for it. So salty, what's going on, Germany? Uh, I think it's just Arbor Elf here. I don't know. I don't think Garrick is super powerful. I'd rather take the Arbor Elf. Primal Command. I, I mean, like, I I don't. So I don't remember the last cube. The last vintage cube, I don't know how good green is. So hopefully we're not just taking a bunch of dirtily green creatures while everyone else is doing super powerful things. But else, that doesn't seem to be the case here. So it's probably Primal Command. I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> I mean, I'm just gonna take the green card. I don't think any of these other cards are actually strong enough to uh, to warrant going into a different color. And tomb is good. We could be the green black. I actually, it's probably in tomb. I'm gonna take in tomb here. That's powerful enough on its own for us to like try to be reanimator. We've already passed an exhum, so that's worth noting.
Um, we can entomb a Sphinx of the Steel one and put that boy, bad boy into play. We can take a Virtuous Gear Hulk. Coalition Relic's also good, but I don't know if we're Coalition Relicking. Raska's Contempt also good if we are indeed black. Tudor also very strong. I mean, I like Tudor going for channel and then just doing something dirty. Let's do that. Oh, natural order. Well, that's pretty good. This is also, like, probably the strongest card in the pack. There are two two solid-looking angels in this pack. I want to take the natural order. That's dirty. Oh, Joyra's in this set? That's interesting. Brontodon's pretty good. So is Dark Petition, actually. This is interesting. I like Brontodon for its versatility. It's either Bronzodon or Dark Petition. I don't think we're going to take a Marsh Flats here. Maybe we are. I mean, we'd have to get a dual land, though, is the problem. Eh, it's probably Marsh Flats. I like Master, and I like Ultimate Price. So. I also like Song of the Dryads. We can also get, uh... We can get Taiga with Marsh Flats. No, we can't. I don't think Scrawl Rack was ever really played that much, so I don't really mind missing Scrawl Rack. We took the ultimate price because uh, it's just a very solid piece of removal. Acidic Slime, that's also a dude. Abrupt Decay, that's also a dude. I almost like Acidic Slime better. Yeah, I think it's actually Slime here. Oh, Vraska? All right. I like the colors that we're in. All right, Garrick Relentless. Okay, well, all right. This is a situation where we literally get everything, um, which happens frequently because it shows that we're in the right colors, at least. Uh, and then the problem becomes... The cards we get are, like, just below, just below really powerful. You know what I mean? So, like, Vraska's good, but she's not broken. Um... Primal Command's okay, but it's not broken. Garrick and Lannis, like, they're very convenient picks, right? Like, Garrick fits perfectly in the four spot. It's a, it's a playable Planeswalker. Primal Command fits in the five spot. It's a, it's a playable Sorcery. The problem is, um, they're not super powerful, so they lull you into this false sense of, like, wow, I'm getting all the cards that we wanted for our deck. To be fair, I think it's still pretty good. I mean, even going on on turn three, being able to go channel into Vraska is still pretty good. Um, I'll just take this, just in case. Uh, it's rare, I feel like it's rarely ever show and tell. Oh, and the Brontodon, see this is what I mean, the Brontodon even came back. That was the card we were deciding between that and, uh, Ultimate Price, I believe? No. I don't even remember what we were deciding on. I think it was Ultimate Price. Yeah, there's definitely been a ton of changes. You can tell it had to have changed because there's a Thrashing Brontodon, a Vraska. Like, there's, you can see the changes right here in this pack. No, it wasn't. It, it, the, the Acidic Slime pick was Abrupt Decay. It was Abrupt Decay and uh, Acidic Slime. All right, so what do we got here? Skirt Tribuilder is fine. Gonti is pretty sweet. Gonti seems real sweet in the cube. Uh, Worn Power Stone seems okay. This is one of the better swords, 
but I don't know if we care about it. Mind Slaver's okay. I think it's either Gonti or Worn Power Stone, to be honest. Gonti does seem really strong. Like, free spells in, in, in Vintage Cube from your opponent's deck seems pretty powerful. Plus, if your opponent's doing any kind of combo shenanigans, like, you can just steal one of their combo pieces. That's pretty cool. Feels like a very obvious pick here. Tri Builder's great, but, I mean, this is a replaceable guy. I had to stop watching a vid to watch this live. Kyle, I appreciate it, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to take the Gonti. I think it's just a stronger card. Abyss. 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 I don't know why he's doing that. It's very strange. Course of Portal is actually very strong. I think it's actually Overgrown Tomb. We have the Marsh Flats already. I wish I could play this Muldrifter, but then, you know, what colors would it be if we played Muldrifter? Salt Eye. It's always Salt Eye. I wonder if, I wonder if I'm naturally drawn to Salt Eye. Like, not even intentionally, but like... Just inadvertently drawn to the Sultai colors because I just happen to like all the cards in those colors more than other magic cards. Does that make sense? Like, the cards that stand out of this pack are Edric, Muldrifter. That's pretty much it. An Overgrown Tomb. So it's like, they just naturally, I, I think they naturally appeal to me. Which might be um, the reason that I'm, I'm so, you know, predisposed to... To Sultai. This is an Emrakul. Um, which is actually what I think we want here. Garrick Wildspeaker is great. So is Elvish Mystic. But this is actually a channel card. So channel Emrakul in hand. We are good to go. G2G. This is also an Emrakul we can entomb and put in the graveyard. So. Seems pretty pretty easy of a choice. So I'm going to take the Emrakul. Emrakul, if you will. Inquisition actually seems pretty solid in this in this cube maybe because you're more of a control value player which red white cards often are just not yeah that's that's I mean that's probably accurate yeah it's definitely Inquisition here um could be Smuggler's Copter but this doesn't this doesn't strike me as a deck where we're gonna have a ton of creatures that we want to crew the Smuggler's Copter with if you know what I mean like in the late game we're gonna have a Vraska which we don't care about Smuggler's Copter at that point um Depending on the number of value creatures, Corpse Dance could actually be good, but I bet Corpse Dance actually comes back as well. I also, this Emrakul doesn't have Annihilator, so just being able to Corpse Dance it just doesn't seem great. Like, we're just wasting three cards there to, uh, to deal 13, which is not nothing, but I mean, like, it doesn't win you the game. And then that's very easy to come back from in a format like this, where your opponent's just like, okay, I'll do my thing now. I'll do my broken thing now. I'm going to take Corsair here. Scavenging use is probably better, especially in this format. God, Corsair's really good, though. We do need some bigger creatures for natural order, though. I guess even sacrificing Arbor Elf for an Acidic Slime is reasonable. Probably not taking through the Breach here. Ooze is definitely better tech for the Graveyard than Corsair of Crufix, because Corfer Corsair of Crufix doesn't interact with the Graveyard. So... This is a late strip mine. I'm actually surprised that this strip mine is here. Green Sun Zenith, also pretty big game. Hmm. I don't think we care about strip mine. Like, I think we're just gonna take the Green Sun Zenith because it works on. Like, this card's great. Uh, we can get a, a ramp guy on two. Get a ramp guy on three. Get an artifact or an enchantment removal on four. On six, we can get acidic slime. Hmm. Finhorn elves seems good. Go for the throat also seems very good. Um, I'm gonna take the ultimate price, the the entomb out for now because we have no way to reanimate anything. So just putting a guy in our graveyard doesn't really do much. 
Fendhorn is basically our Relf at this point. I think I'd just rather have to go for the throw. We don't we don't have actually any removal of the ultimate price right now, so I'd rather have two pieces of that. Two pieces of that. Uh Lotus Cobra seems pretty okay. Pernicious Deed seems good. Artifact creature and enchantment. It doesn't hit planeswalkers, which is a relevant thing. I still think it's better than probably the Lotus Cobra. It's just probably really good to have. I don't know if we're going to make... Wow, the sword came back. That's pretty good. I'm just going to take the sword here. Um, No, I don't want Abyss. I don't want Edric. Someone's getting Crucible World, so we have to make sure they don't also get Strip Mine. Whatever, I'll take Sword. Wow, the Garrick came... Skull Clamp came back. Oh, wow. How do you choose between two of your favorite children? Wow, that's insane. It's gotta be Skull Clamp, right? Smuggler's Copter and Oath of Nyssa. The top three cards, real creature, land, or planeswalker. I always like rereading this because I just want to make sure I know exactly what it does. Um, yeah, we'll take Oath here. Oh, the Courser came back. Gas. Spell Sky is actually a pretty solid sideboard card. Could have taken uh, Sorcerer's Sorceress Spyglass. I think that would have been a fine pick, but. There she is. Mana Crypt. Also not bad. Might just be Emrakul Aeon's torn though, let's be real. Cradle also pretty good, but we're definitely not a Cradle deck. We're not going to go... We're not going to have too many creatures. We have eight creatures right now. One of them costs 13 mana. <laughs> oh, the clamp came back the very next day. Do we pass a mana crypt for an Emrakul? Dang, that is a... That is a bold... Uh, a bold decision we'd have to make there. Oh, uh, love Tim GG. I'm actually, I haven't been making CFA videos for about seven months now. I've been doing my own YouTube channel and my own streaming, so. Uh, Emrakul? It's got to be Emrakul, right? All right. All right, we passed. <sighs> it doesn't feel good. I like a Ranger. I like Maelstrom Pulse, and I like Drag Tusk here. These are all very, very good. Necromancy, also not bad, and we do have Entomb in the sideboard. The problem is we don't have many things to Necromancy at the point, at, the, at this moment. We can only, like, Emrakul the Promised End is the only thing we want to put in the graveyard. It doesn't even have, like, an Enter's Battlefield trigger. It's just real 13-13. It's got protection for instance, though. But then we have to play the Entomb, and I'm not really 100% on that either, so. Is Thrag great for natural? You mean sacrificing it to natural order? Is Spell Pierce good? What What's the questions we're asking in this chat here? Alright, anyway, we gotta, we gotta pick something. I'll probably Thrag Tusk here. Fraley's is probably one of my favorite Planeswalkers in the cube. She's just super versatile. Being able to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. Uh, being able to make guys, which is a very relevant factor uh, in the... Matthew Ori, it's very weird when you just ask people randomly, right? Like, it's weird because you weren't responding to Josh. I was just like, what did Josh say? Anyway. Yeah, Fraley's also have Skull Clamp. We could potentially cut Acidic Slime for Fraley's as well. Yeah, I think it's probably the strongest card in this pack. Ulamog. 
I like Woodfall Primus. Woodfall Primus is great with Channel. It's great with Green Sun Zenith. It's great with um, Natural Order. Yeah, Woodfall Primus is super strong. So is Terastodon, though. Both of these are very strong. So is Sylvan Library. This, this pack, can I just take four cards out of this pack? I'm going to put Acidic Slime over here for now. Actually, we'll put Primal Command over here for now. I like having the double Acidic, acidic Slime acidic slime effects. I don't know why I thought I said that incorrectly, but then I didn't. I think it's got to be Woodfall Primus. Like, Woodfall Primus is basically a Ulamog, right? Plus, it's got Persist. I think Woodfall Primus is probably better with Natural Order than Terastodon is. I think it's actually more oppressive. All right, um, so now we're getting real channel cards here, which is pretty sweet. Hold control and select them all. I like that. Heroes Downfall is good. Harmonize is good. Mirror Bowser is good. Reckling. This, all these packs have been great for us. Yeah, I'm taking the Ulamog here. It doesn't go with Natural Order, but it does go with Channel. And um, is that correct? Feels correct, right? I mean, also, we have Vampiric Tutor, so it's basically like having two channels. Yeah, I'm going to take this guy. Avenger of Zendikar. Okay, so it's very clear that we are the only... The only green drafter here. I mean, turn two channel Ulamog or turn two channel Emrakul seems pretty good. I don't think we're that light on removal. We have Ultimate Price, Go for the Throat. We have... Uh, Gonti's kind of like removal. I mean... As far as non-creatures go, we have Acidic Slime, we have all the other things. I mean, we can't remove that many creatures, but Da Vinci's Cube is not often uh, that creature heavy. I think it is Avenger, but I like Buried Alive because there's some potential there, but we already have Entomb that we're probably not playing, so. We'll take Avenger. Oh, a Bayou. That sounds perfect. I also like Thoughtseize a lot, so... I think Thoughtseize is great here. I would take the Massacre Arm, but I don't think we want to play Triple Black card. I think it's just Bayou here. We also have Inquisition, so we're not totally... I kind of like Thrun for the sideboard. That guy's pretty good. Also, Brain Maggot was an option. Sort of Fire and Ice. This gives us protection from all swords. We have Black, Green, White, Blue, and Red if we take this sword. This member is cool, but I think I'd just rather have the sword here, just in case. And we get a Maelstrom Pulse, which is probably better than some other card we're playing. Um, just take Wasteland. Actually, we'll take the Will. Oh, the Terrestrial and the Sylvan Library come back. Of course they do. Oath of Nissa is probably getting cut. I think at this point, Sylvan Library is just, oh, Wow. This is an embarrassment of green riches. We already have way too many effects like this. We can just take the Harmonize here. And Regrowth is even not terrible. And Lumbering Falls lets us play the Soul Tide deck that we've always wanted. This is one of those situations where, like, everyone on the, on the, on the YouTube comments is going to be like, How did... Oh my god, no one was... Was everyone asleep? And I'm just going to agree with them, because... Yeah. Twenty six cards. All right, we have three swords that we can board in, depending on the, depending on the mood. Old Emrakul doesn't have the new frame. Look at that. These two do. She does not. That is interesting. We have three cuts to make here. Ooh. Take out Green Sun Zenith? Is that good? We have Wall of Roots, Scavenging Ooze, Arbor Elf. Two of these guys. I could see Inquisition coming in on the out of the sideboard. That seems fine. I also don't know if we need, need Harmonize. Harmonize could be just kind of meh. Um, I don't think Garrick Relentless is super... Garrick does make um, 
wolves. So that's cool. I like wolves. Craig RTG, one wow, look at all that green buck. That is these are one that's one of my favorite kind of bucks, sir. I like Avenger in here, but I really don't think it's like Do we need three of these? Order might not be great. Thank you. Kid Cabbage, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Six months in a row. Thank you, dude. I would cut a big guy. Three seems too many. Well, how does four seem? <laughs> so, I don't think we cut clamp. I mean, the, the thing about here, here's the thing about clamp. Like, you don't have to have a skull clamp deck. If you put it on your wall of roots and then block something and your wall of roots dies and you draw two cards, it's still paid for itself. Think about this as a, a divination for two mana. Um, that has the potential to draw you way more than two cards in a game. I, I think people look at Skull Clamp the wrong way and they say like, hey. Um, you know, if you don't have a ton of creatures to put it on, it's not that good. But the fact is, like, Harmonize draws you three cards one time. Skull Clamp will draw you four cards more often than not. And a lot of times you can, like, it's just upside if you can get to the late game with a card like Fraley's or a card like Garrick Relentless that just pumps out tokens. But for, don't forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he always wanted. He lived happily ever after. <laughs> yeah, put the clamp on the brown on, then sack it to get rid of their thing. Yeah, it does let you trade up too. Like, if they have a 3 3 and you have a 2 3. Now you kill their guy and draw two. Like, Skull Clamp is just a very, very powerful card. I mean, I know that's that sounds silly to actually say, but... Um, it almost looks like these connect. Do you see this, like, this this tentacle looks like it's going from one to the other, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I could see playing 1741 with this. My, my concern is having multiple of these. The thing is we have Vampiric Tutor and Channel... So we can actually, due to Bayou, Marsh Flats, and Overgrown Tomb, we can actually go turn one Vampiric Tutor into Channel. We also have Arbor Elf Wall of Roots. So. Fifteen mana is a lot, but, I mean... Uh, Natural Order definitely don't, doesn't only hit Primus. It also hits Thrag Tusk, it hits Acidic Slime. It hits Scavenging Use if we need that effect. Um, looking at looking at natural order and saying it, it it only hits creatures that cost eight mana or six mana or seven mana, um, is a is a pretty big fallacy. I think if you need a natural order and you can sacrifice your arbor elf to get a thrag tusk or an acidic slime in play to kill something extremely relevant, um, I think that's powerful. Alternatively, though, we do have green sun zenith, which does the same thing. So, like for natural order, instead of playing instead of paying four, we can pay six to get these. So I think natural order is is cuttable here. And also, alternatively, um, you don't actually want a natural order or channel an Avenger of Zendikar because then you're just getting like a 5-5 five, five and like two one ones or four one ones, which is not super impressive. I think this is probably the deck. I do worry about having too many mana sources, but I don't think that's the case. So I think this deck looks sweet. Let's add some basics. And we got that Gaunty. Please, 10. 11, 12, 13 sources of black or green, and then we have four, five, six, seven. So this is seven, thirteen. That's not bad, but none of our none of our green sources actually produce back black. So I probably want nine. This is probably 12, 12, 8. Sounds better to me. Eight eight sources of black is basically the amount you have in a in a standard in a regular limited format where you have nine eight, except now we have twelve eight because of Marsh Flats over Roman Bayou. So that's pretty sweet. And if we're ever in a position where Marsh Flats can't get a green source, it means we already have Bayou and Overgrown Tomb, so we should just be fine. Let's 
Well, this hand is actually surprisingly slow for this deck. I think we have to mulligan this hand in Vintage Q, but they went to six, so I'm going to keep it because of that. Also, if we just draw a channel, we'll mog. Like, yeah, it's, that's perfect. Let's do that. <laughs> this basically looks like a friggin' standard hand. Oh, Fragocytic Slime is not legal. It's standard. Uh... Oh, that was pretty sweet. Just the time on the other day. Discard a forest in the usual way. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Now you guys got cats in the cradle stuck in my head because of that skull clamp song you guys did in the chat. Um, Let's see what it is. Wow. This goblin guide is super friendly. I knew it was going to be an idol on. It's so it's so infuriating. All right. Something we can play. Channel. Channel doesn't do anything. Why did you want a channel? I don't understand. All right, so we're going to take 4 and then we're going to take 6. So we're going to 9. Ultimate price. It's pretty okay, I guess. And they're playing white. Alright, so they have three cards. They didn't play anything. Go to nine. Alright. Let's see how dead we are. Cats in the cradle and the field. Moon. And the pie. Moon. The man in the... Boros Charm. B -b 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 Boros Charm. Swords of Plasho is this guy? Wow, that's great. Alright, so we go to 8 instead of 9. And now we go to 5 instead of 9. Instead of 8. Well, that was a good mull to 6 they had. Some people wait months just to half-ass their mono red vintage cube decks. We aren't those people. What can I get with that for for three? It would cost four. So one, two, three, four. Wouldn't take damage here. Wall of Earth scavenging use Corsair of Crufix seems good. Ulamog on the top. I mean, if we can actually untap, go Swamp, Thrag Tusk, we actually should be okay. But I don't think that's going to happen. They have two cards. Thanks for getting Cat's Cradle. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like. Well... I will block because I'm not some kind of dummy. Yep. Sure. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Red Deck. Spellskite, come on in. Join the party. Uh, Primal Command gains us 7 million life, so let's bring that in. Just in case we survive that long, Inquisition can probably come in over something like... I don't know. Don't feel like we're skull clamping this match. You can also take out, like... Probably take out the big Emrakul, because if we do channel, we probably want one of these two. Um... I could cut channel, but, like, I'd rather just... I'd rather just use it.
Oh, uh, we did not take the Rex Sage. No, we had we had we had plenty of effects like that already, including Brontodon. I think it's fine like this. Uh no, Natural Order doesn't even do anything close to to channel because we have Ulamog and Emrakul in our deck. These hands are so slow. I don't we have a ton of uh We have a ton of low low end creatures and we just can't Well, like we're not gonna cut channel and try to stay alive. Like if we if we have channel and we're not gonna stay alive, we're just not gonna use it. But if it's turn two, we can definitely Emrakul out uh with channel and then just use their burn spells on themselves or something like Like having channel in your deck doesn't mean you're automatically gonna die to the burn deck, you just don't cast it. Oh, I passed too much acceleration in this draft. I didn't know that. Good to know. <laughs> good, good to know. Uh, it's funny because we're not an acceleration deck. We're actually just trying to channel and play mid-range, but I guess I'll keep that in mind. All right. No red sources, huh? That's pretty good. I don't care about any of these other cards. Dire Fleet Daredevil is kind of obnoxious, but we don't actually have any hits for you right now. Soulfire Grandmaster I, is probably the, part, the most problematic card there. Oh, the second ultimate where it says Fraley's can be your commander. That's the that's the uh, that's the secret ultimate. All right, so next time we get to go this guy into this guy. That seems pretty good. I assume we played this, and I'm going to assume you play other planes. Oh, well. I think they're going to go Dire Fleet Daredevil into Inquisition here, which seems pretty sweet. Yep, that's what we thought. So we know four of their cards. So now we can actually just Garrick and shoot this guy. Although then, we, then they can Zergo into it. That's pretty sad. Okay, that's a good dude. Let's play that guy. I don't think chat reminds me of Hindsight Lad in the sense that it comes too late. The chat the chat information is funny because it comes when they have perfect information. And then they criticize you for decisions you made when you didn't actually have any information at all. So it's like, why didn't you do this? Well, it's easy for you to suggest that because you literally knew exactly how the game was going to go. But I didn't. So here we are. Abbot of Carol Keep hit a mountain. That was good. That was a good hit. So you still know four of the five cards in your hand. Old Zergles. Zergles. Mick. Oh, that's good, dude. That is a dude. All right. <laughs> when you're wrong, you're wrong. When you're right, you're wrong. Oh. No. So she would go up to five and we'd have two blockers, so we can go block here, block here. She would take two. You don't have a Zergo. We know three of the, the four cards in your hand. You could path the guy, which pumps your abbot. Any other spell means we trade, which is not ideal. So we'd probably have the abbot and two more through, which means Fraley's dies. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's actually just Thrag Tusk here. Super doop and some the other day. Kitty cats in the usual way. Path my thrag tusk and give me a guy. And then give me a land too. You know you want you know that's what you want to do, son. We basically just playing uh unpathable creatures here, so which is pretty sweet. Did you play planes? Alright. So you have Path, Fire Drinker, and two other cards. 
Two random cards. That's a good one. Fraley's destroys that. That's pretty cool. Hey, that's pretty good. If we play Garrick and shoot this guy, they could pass something in response. Oh. Alright. I will definitely use that ability. Give me another green. Look at all this land I have. Give me my Thrag Tusk. Put him down. You got some things and lightning bolt this guy. And then you got a lot of damage on the board. And it's really quite sad. I'm gonna be like you. How many viewers are leaving right now because these ridiculous songs are singing? Slavin and Chibas, I would hope you share me some green deck. Was Bjorn, what's going on, buddy? Always. Alright, so you have one card in hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can play Fraley's Make a Guy. We have three blockers. And then, like, if they even if they even alpha, like, we're so far ahead at that point that it's like. Do we even mind? Like, we they have to, like, suicide their whole board into our things. 1 1 into here, 3 3 into, like, here, 4 4 into there. Like, we lose a Fraley's, but. I'm sorry, Frank. We had to put your Thrag Tusk. He was a good boy. He was the best boy. But no, I'm gonna talk like you, Dad. I don't, for, I don't foresee this Emrakul getting played. What's this clip you got here? Give me my Thrag Tusk. Put him down. Wow, that's just rude. I mean... This run is really holding down the fort, though. Let's be real. Oh, Mox Ring, Mox Ruby, Mox, Mox, Mox Sapphire, Mox Ruby, and Soul Ring. That's pr oh, were they in the same pack, or do you got them all? Some guys have all the luck. The cats in the cradle and the silver spoons. Little boy blue and the tusk in the mood. When you come at home, drag tusk, I don't know when. You gotta send all your men over if you wanna kill Fraley's now. Whoop. Yeah. There you go. That's what you gotta do. These guys are going to my face? These three are going to my face? One, two, three, four, five. Face, face, face. Fraley's, Fraley's, Fraley's. Okay. So Fraley's is gonna live. You have one card in hand? I presume Fraley's will survive. Lightning Bolt Fraley's. Sure. Regenerate Thrun. Boy, they had everything, didn't they? When I think back on all the shit I learned in high school. What's better here? Making a wolf or shooting something? It's a wonder I can make it all. So shooting something is almost the same as a wolf, but it lowers Garrick. So we're actually just going to make a wolf here. Besides, a wolf can actually probably take out two things. Like, if they attack with everybody, we can block here. You like how we switch from Cats in the Cradle to Paul Simon's Kodachrome? Man. What, get, what even goes on in my head? I don't know. I could shoot the satyr, but it's the, probably the creature I care about the least. I mean, they can pump it, but if they want to pay four mana to take two and pump it twice, like, all right. We're at 19, which is pretty healthy, and they have one card in hand. I feel like our Planeswalker is just pricing them into alphaing every turn. Everybody at Garrick? Well, I'll be... This guy got first strike, so we're probably just killing you instead because you're not going to be able to. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or actually, the golem is better, but we do have cards like Acidic Slime, which just which just kill a golem, and uh, Garrick's going to die anyway. So, yeah, that was pretty good. Go for the throat is also pretty good. I will use this ability. 
Scavenging ooze is pretty pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty. Um Huh. One, two. Uh put on top. Put on top. I don't see how this doesn't seal the deal. Now we're just getting a little more aggressive. Because, <laughs> really, I think we're just fine. We might have taken slime out. We still have Thrashing Bronton on. Like, we have tons of things. We have things that kill this, is really my point. Can this guy block? Can't block creatures of power to a greater. So, basically, no. Uh, put on top. Pay four life to keep. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. If a creature dies, that's twelve, so that's pretty good. So ten? I like that you didn't attack, but you also didn't block. That's intriguing to me. Go for the throat. Actually, golems don't have throats, so it's it's definitely worse. It's uh, it's definitely not good. I almost actually pernicious deed seems insane. I didn't think they they really go wide. Pernicious deed seems very very good in that in that in that in that case. Uh, I'm gonna take this Emrakul out and bring in Avenger here because that just seems like a better card. Seven mana is more realistic than thirteen, and also being able to go wide. Oh, no power, no. This is no power is the uh, the Dominaria draft equivalent of our our cube experience. <laughs> Actually, sort of War and Peace seems pretty good here. Let's be real. I didn't. Hmm. Yeah, they're both of those colors. So, um. Do we care about Gonti? I can take Gonti out for a sort of War and Peace and stay at 41. Actually, Gonti's probably better than Vraska, but... Oh, he has the Mana Crypt, but I don't necessarily consider Mana Crypt. What do these, these hands have to go, dude? Where's my Arbor Elf Corsair of Crewfix hands? This is not a keepable hand. Is it? Ultimate Price? We just top deck? I'll keep it. Whatever. He's going to give us a land... It's going to be good. All right, we did it. So now we're just hoping for turn two channel so we can go Ulmog, exile your Goblin Guide, exile your lands. This is not a keepable hand. I'll keep it. That is exactly what happened. Thrashing Brontodon? I'm okay with shuffling you. Oh, no two drop and no Eidolon. I like it. Let's get Overgrown Tomb here. Because we don't want to have to draw it and have to pay for it. Channel? Arbor Elf? Fashionably late to the party, my friend. I'm just going to keep Ultimate Price up here. Next turn we can go Spell Skite Arbor Elf and then redirect from Spell Skite to Arbor Elf if we'd like. Sure. Alright, well, presuming you don't have Lightning Strike, Searing Spear, blah de blah in hand. Alright, you have one red source, so that's pretty okay.
Hmm. Yeah, we're going to kill this guy still. I don't want to take two. Um, if they don't pair this with anything, we can just block it next turn. Having Pernicious Deed is pretty good here, so... We are going to run both of these out, though, because if we don't Pernicious Deed, it's better. And if we do Pernicious Deed, like, we can't actually Pernicious Deed without playing Arbor Elf here, because next turn, we'll just play Pernicious Deed. Actually, I guess we could have played Pernicious Deed that turn. Let them play whatever they wanted to. We'd take four from this guy. But if they have anything with haste, it's pretty terrifying. Like, if they play, like, Hero of Blade, not Hero of Blade Hold, Hero of Oxid Ridge. We'd be dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely blocking with spell sky here. If that if that reverts uh diverts a removal spell from your hand, I'm okay with that. Because we have pernicious deed. So Wow. They didn't do anything. And neither did we, it appears. I think we're just dropping the deed. Do the deed. Did the deed deed. One, two, three, four, five. We're almost we're almost at a log. Yeah, we're probably dead to hero anyway. That's just an example. I'm just giving it. I'm just a four mana. Replace it with whatever you want. Replace it with Hellrider. Replace it with whatever creature you want. It was just an example of how a hasty creature with four power can kill us. We don't have to be literal all the time. That's a good dude. Alright. They have two cards in hand, so they're probably holding something to play around deed, which is just fine. One, two, three, four, five. God, I, I was like, I know it's going to be Ronson on because they're going to give us something that we can play, we can deed, and then play it. It's actually not terrible. We could also just wait, because I'm pretty sure if we just wait... Um, yeah, we're just going to wait. We might get free free value off the deed. Probably not, though. Do you think that Boros Charm here? That'd be sick, right? Yeah, maybe we just... We have to pop it now, because then we can play Bronson on. If they have Boros Charm, it's pretty bad for us. I don't think they're going to play anything into it. They're just going to go to combat, so I'm not... Uh, I don't want to waste the opportunity. So they have two cards. We're at 12. Actually, that feels pretty good. And there's no Boros Charm in the queue. All right, that's sweet. Glad you guys knew that. I had no idea. Oh, they didn't play anything. And we draw Thrag Tusk. Like you do. You know what? I'll just wait. I'll attack first. Thank you. Dim Shadow with the three months in a row. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Skull crack? Don't skull crack me, bro. If this says... Se oh my god, 17 life against the red deck. Oof. I will gladly channel for six to play in a mog here. What does this deck do with seven mana that it can't do with, like, 
three mana. I feel like they don't have anything. I don't think they have like six and seven drops in their hand that they're just waiting to cast. I mean, these lands aren't great, but with the Ulamog sitting in hand, it's pretty fine. Jake, I like that you've been tuning in each day, man. It's good It's good being able to, to see and chat with you on a regular basis. Oh, just a, just holding incinerate. Casually holding incinerate. I like it. Oh, here we go. The value. That's actually good with seven mana. Pfft. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, fantastic. You know, for the lulls. Sweet Lotus. All right, well, that's a value machine. I'm just a value machine. But me. Uh, five in the graveyard for Emrakul. Yeah, we took Emrakul out because... Uh, Avenger of Zendikar felt better. And even in a situation like this, I'd still rather have an Avenger of Zendikar because it's going to just kill them straight up. I mean, they have time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I do feel like this is top deck mode for them, but I mean... Top tech mode and cube is not the worst. Although we are at 17 and they're a red deck, so. I'm not sure how they actually beat a Thrun. Okay, now I'm not sure how they win at all. I always want to get this guy out of three mana range. So we're going to do that right now. When are you going to come down? I think we just won the game. Lightning Strike the Beast. Okay, that was your last card. Seems good. They could double block Bronto Don. Bronto Donald. Which is probably what they're going to do. Yeah, we're going to kill this guy. Hellrider's a significantly scarier card. Yeah, and we still have 4-4, four, 4-4... Four, four, four. And uh, four four one of our four fours can be a five five six six seven seven eight eight nine nine ten ten. That's pretty good. Oh, got him! That was a good. That was a good match, Arena. Do we want to change anything? Does anything feel out of place? I actually like Reclamation Sage much better than Brontodon because I like being able to play the creature and not lose it. Right, so if they have like an enchantment, I want to be able to play a body and uh, increase my board my, my board position, and then still uh, not 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 lose the creature to do it. Also, you can play it on turn three, whereas Thrashing Bronze Down doesn't kill anything any sooner than four mana. So um, that's my Reclamation Sage versus Bronto Dawn thoughts. I'm, my super weak keeps were still better than their regular keeps. Their their Abbot of Kirk keeps. My my keeps were better than their keeps, brah. Brah. I will play first. I just want to channel 
Yeah, we'll keep this hand. It does things. Nothing terribly exciting, but it does some things. <clears throat> Whatever, I'm just going to run Skull Clamp out there. Oh, an island. Oh, a Corsi. A Corsi of Crowfix. I want to see channel into any Emrakul. I don't even care which one, man. Boom, ba ba 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 boom, boom. <clears throat> oh, deck fading. Well, isn't that special? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, again! Play land off the tippity top. Always yield. Equip you. Attack the deck. <clears throat> and we'll play Bronte. Green Sun Zenith off top seems pretty good. <coughs> so does Acidic Slime here. Ponder. If you got to design an Oath of Frank, what colors would it be? Oh, please. Come on, Dim Shadow. You know better than that. We can also move Skull Clamp, destroy one of their things, and draw two. I thought they were going to steal Clamp as well. Treasure Cruise. Okay. Well, aren't there some... There's some certainly some things up here, huh? One, two, three, four, five. So we can get something for four. Uh, can't get Gaunty. We could just, we're probably just acidic sliming a land, right? Killing Dak, acidic sliming a land, putting us way ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six. Destroy all flavored crust pizzas in play? Woo! That's brutal. Brainstorm? What is even going on? Uh, no. You can have that guy. That's quite all right. Well, they don't have any red mana. Or blue mana, rather. One, two, three, four, five... Give me a dude, give me a dude. Merg me off me isn't that dude. Oh. To the face. Okay. It's a bold strategy. I wonder if they were trying to redirect there. I wonder if they Oh right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, well we get the concession after that one. Sweet. I ah, I hate drawing cards when we have Courser out. All right, so Thrun definitely comes in. Spell Skite seems pretty good here. Sort of Fire and Ice seems good. Take out... Both of these seem good. I like both of those. Take out Emrakul, one Emrakul. Everything else seems fine. Um, 
probably one of these, right? They didn't seem like Storm to me. I mean, I mean, Dak Faden, Brainstorm, Ponder. Maybe they are. Actually, maybe they are. We'll bring an Inquisition. We'll take out both of these then. I think we can get by without them. I know you had a bad experience last time and after Key was over the event, not this one. You should check out Arena again. The last that they brought in Kaladesh and a lot of... I don't know. I just don't have a reason to. Like, I... Oh, for crying out loud. Um, like, I want to be incentivized to play Magic Online or Magic Arena. Like, not incentivized in the sense... I don't want... They don't mean that to, like, pay me or give me something cool. Like, that's not what I mean. I just mean, like, it has to be better than Magic Online for me to go play arena, right? Like, oh, they missed a land drop. That's aggressive. Okay, sure. My wall can't block. Do, 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 do. Cascade bluff splinter twin. All right, that's not it. That's good. Give me a brick. Brick me off a brick. Brick, brick, brick. Oh, that was pretty good. That was a good draw. I'm a fan of that draw. I like that draw. Draw was good. Arena. Okay, so here's from a spectator's position. Arena looks, it's hard to follow. I'm as I'm playing Arena, right? And I couldn't even figure out what was going on. I'm just like, what's happening right now? Like, it's very... Con There's a lot going on on the screen at any given time, and it's just very confusing. And don't get me wrong, I want to like Arena. I want to like every magic offering, every digital magic offering that comes out. I want to like it because it's good for magic. But I... It was hard. It was. It's hard to, like... There's so much going on. Like, in Hearthstone, like, there's a lot of things in the corners. But on the board, it's just a clean board and, like... Everything is clear, but like everything moves around in, in arena. It's just, it's hard to, it's hard to like, to deal with. I don't know. Maybe that sounds weird, but one, two, three, four, let's make a dude. Remember the time we drafted channel and a bunch of dudes and we couldn't actually, we could never channel anything. Cryptic command. <gasps> oh. Oh, the excitement! We get to play Cryptic Command and a non-Cryptic Command deck! So next time we can go 1, 2, 3 for Corsair, play a land, and then we have 1, 2, 3 untapped, and then we can use Wall of Roots on their turn. That's gas. Oh, that's sad. I has a sad. One, two, three, four, five. We can also just play. We can also just play Braska and kill this, which seems pretty good. I think we're gonna try to do that. I doubt they're gonna have days, so. And we have a lot of things. Happening right now. That was a very... I thought that Gonti was pretty cryptic, actually. Look at him. He's all in the shadows. Look how cryptic that Gonti is. Although he was commanding as well. They still have seven cards, but... Our board is... is pretty good. Plus, we have cryptic command up... <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all you need to see, I guess. That's pretty good. Woo! All right, our deck is uh, seems okay. It seems okay. This has also been very quick. Boy, I love Vintage Cube. Well, our first opponent had um, had Lotus. Our second opponent had Soul Ring. So, you know, like you do.
I must be close attention to how you play this because I have no idea how to cube drafts. I'm working on it, Dan. I'm working on it. I just like hearing you have been excited. Yeah, dude, I was getting really down about the Dominaria drafts. Because it just felt like I was a punching bag at the end. It just felt like we were getting beat down constantly with the uh, with the last few drafts. And that was just not fun. This is a mulligan, unfortunately. So we have to take this out because we're not going to play it really. And we have to look at our hand and say, is this a good six-card hand? And can we do better? And I think we can do better than this six-card hand. I think we did. I think this hand's good. Uh, Courser's actually very good because we can go turn two Courser. Presuming it doesn't die, but they just played a blue card, so I think we're okay. I would like to draw Channel Ob. Wall of Rudy Tooties. Well, we already opened Lyra. Lyra was in our first pack, so we've already opened more Lyras in the Vintage Cube than we did in 60 Dominaria drafts. So, huh. One, two, three. I guess we just go Wall of Roots here. Next turn we can Acidic Slime, which is pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have a lot of mana, though. We did not get a dry at Arbor. That'd be gas, though. Wow. So apparently they just play mana. They don't really do much but play mana. Well, that's interesting. Well, isn't that special? Maelstrom Pulse. I kind of like that. One, two, three, four, five. We actually have to play this if we want to Acidic Slime here. Alternatively, we could just play Garrick. Let's go on tap, on tap. Let's play into your counter spell, because why not? Oh, no counter spell. I feel like I want to get rid of this forest, to be quite honest. It's not it's less mana, but, I mean, the green seems relevant in decks that are ramping, so maybe that was dumb. I don't know. We'll find out. And, of course, there's a land on top that we could have played had we, uh, had we not play our land first, but then we wouldn't have been able to Acidic Slime, so it is what it is. Dan, this is the first time I've played this version of the cube, so I'm not sure. Um, typically, in there's Storm, there's Mono Red. Four, five, six, seven, eight... Sure, let's see what happens here. That could have been a mistake. I mean, I just saw a green. We couldn't have taken them off that anyway. So that's fine. Sure. And what are we discarding here? Forest. Forest is fine. Now we have three lands. So we can go you, and then we have two left over, which doesn't do anything for us. So I'm pretty sure we actually just want the courser again. Or we can just play Wall of Roots and then actually have Acidic Slime Mana next turn, which might be better. Yeah, I guess that's better. If that's the case, we probably should have played Swamp so we can keep up, uh, go for the throat, but...
either way, we're already 2-0, so. Caracas is not something I'm super concerned about. Frost Titan is pretty good, though. Yeah, that's actually not unreasonable. One. One, two, three. Actually, we can kill Frost Titan here, which is probably what we're going to do. Seems fine. So we're bringing in all artifact things. We have a lot. We have Fraley's, we have Thrashing Bronze, and we have Acidic Slime so far, so that's not terrible. We also have Maelstrom Pulse. Okay, that's pretty good. You play Garrick, kill my own Arbor Elf. I don't actually know how we deal with that. Yeah, I think we got too greedy. We saw them as a green deck when they're an upheaval deck, and that's good to know. Worth noting, they could also bounce their Emrakul infinitely, so they can save it. So we kind of have to draw, like, Maelstrom Pulse here, which would be sick. I mean, even Gonsi into Control Magic, they can just bounce their... They have Caracas, so they can just bounce their Emrakul. Which is pretty pretty OP. So we really want to be able to untap and just hit Maelstrom Pulse off the top. Oh, Acidic Slime kill one of my own lands. Now we're not going to be able to do that. Alright, well that's the end. Not terrible. Ponder. Three all day. No, no, nothing. Okay. We'll thrash out the monolith when they actually untap it. What is happening right now? Sore of temptation on acidic slime. Or sure <laughs> seems good <laughs> well that's that ladies and gentlemen I will not block all right Conti can still win us the game somehow So now we're going to waste Thrashing Bronzadon on Sword. Uh, I don't think it matters. We actually have one draw step, too. I don't think that does anything. <laughs> I think that's good, but not here. All right, we're going to go to the next game. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to use restroom real quick, and uh, then we'll finish this match.
We also, uh, before we left, we boarded in a couple things. Pernicious Deed, uh, Inquisition, and some other stuff. Oh, yes, we'll keep this hand. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, we can do it. Emrakul off the top. One time, one time. Emrakul off the top. Do -do -do -do. Hmm. Wasn't an Emrakul. We have Emer We have so many things too. We have like fourteen thousand things. We could channel into acidic slime, but that doesn't seem great. I'm just gonna attack here. I might actually just pulse that. Get the bayou. One time, one time, one time. Dang it. No times. Yeah, we're going to pulse this. Just keep them off all their mana. Next time we can acidic slime whatever else they play. Pretty aggressive. Well, you're the... <laughs> well, you're the upheaval deck, so... It's actually, my name is, I almost want to do Brontodon here. Because land, Acidic Slime can get a land next turn. Make sure he's doing alright in there. I'm right here. I don't know, but I'm already back. Long time YouTuber, first time catching you live. Thanks for the entertaining videos. Whether my son loves you sing, nice. Appreciate it. Oh, that's pretty good. If only I had something to do with my, with my things. Shroud is a real thing. Island Walk is less so a real thing. Caracas. Okay. That's obnoxious considering we have channel, so. Yeah, that fish is something, man. They have three cards. Take a time twister. Basalt monolith. Sure. This is ridiculous. Channel has been terrible for us. Uh, Emrakul beats Caracas because it's on the stack. Yeah, that's a good point. Or not Emrakul, Ulmog, rather. My concern is that they have, like, Sword of Feast and Famine that they're that they're trying to slow roll. So I don't care about Basalt Monolith here. Yeah, that's pretty good. One, two. This guy. And then they have one, two, three, four, five. So we'll just put them like this. You can have either. 
What did they take? Feast Forest Island Sword into their hand. F. Oh, did they reveal it? Oh, yes. Fantastic. All right, so I have three of the four cards in your hand. Seems good. All right, so to be clear, all three of our opponents have had power. Well, that's pretty okay. This guy has Shroud, actually. They can't even equip, actually. Can we draw Wilmog off the top one time? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. That's eh, fine. Actually, Vraska's pretty good. So she goes to eight. You played this. What land did you play? A land? You played an island. All right. So we know one of the five cards in your hand. So she goes to eight and then they attack. We go block. Yeah, I don't really care about any of their things. I just rather make menace pirates that can actually deal damage here. Maybe we just kill them too. Who knows? Who knows what happens? Vraska's a heck of a drug. <laughs> Mox equals Lyra's Soul Ring equals Tefri Black Lotus equals. Yeah, that's the. Uh, they're my three. They're the three ghosts of Mythic Past. Load stony. Sure. I'll go for the threads looking awkward now. But not really. Frasca's pretty good. Channel one time a thing, not a thing. Not a channelable thing. Yes, Krakas is legendary creature, not planeswalker. Uh, because I have Thrashing Bronson on, so in response I could just kill this, and then I can kill this. So. So now we actually have to kill a thing. She goes to five, which means we block here. I guess we could double block and keep her alive, which is totally fine. Emrakul will just get bounced back to our hand, but we also get a free turn. So, I mean, at, at that point, we can go plus two Vraska, negative ten Vraska kill you because <laughs> we have a million. So, I mean, just because you can point out the play doesn't mean that it does not work. Um, also, Ulamog is insane because we kill uh, Caracas in either, either one of these. So, uh, Blah, 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 blah. Do we care about this guy? Not really, right? Like, we can actually... We have enough blockers that we don't actually care about this guy. We can Thrashing Bronson on the sword and then double block it. It's fine. It doesn't have Trample. We can actually block with Elf and Pirate if we want to. Putting them to... Uh, they have to actually attack here. Putting them to... One life next turn is probably just... Make a dude make him swing into slime? What does that mean? Yep. Just as we thought you'd do. Don't waste another minute on you crying. Alright. Let's see if we can do what we want to do. 
kill that thing. Block here, block here. So Vraska goes to five, but we have a Vraska on board, and that's pretty good. And now they have nothing. Mishra's factory. That is not going to do it. That is not either, though, so... Do we just keep attacking? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that was a horrible attack because what are their other alternatives? Like if they just attack with Lodestone Golem, Vraska stays at 10, we chump block, we put them to one, and then we kill them. If they just attack with this guy, they just lose this guy. I mean, they had to, they had to attack horribly there. Yeah, we're just going to pass here. Like, we just have to be able to beat an upheaval, which is not going to be easy. <sighs> like, I just want to draw one big dude before, before we upheaval. Alright, they played a forest. If they had upheaval, they're not going to be playing their lands because they're going to play it after. One time. One time. Oh, come on, lands! Is there an artifact, creature, or an enchantment? Like, do we give them two turns to do it? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like they can float three already, which is pretty rough. And then they can play a land, so they actually have four mana. I don't think Monolith is actually doing anything for them. Well, why, why, I would like to know why we minus the mana rock before we just minus the mana rock. Like it just doesn't do anything is really the issue. I mean, I feel like if we drew, like, God, we have so many things. Even Woodfall Primus is really good here. Like, being able to go Vraska on Basalt Monolith is plus, um, it gets rid of three mana, but they still have four mana, right? So, like, I'd rather, like, this gives them, like, it puts them on a two-turn clock, right? They have to do something this turn or next turn, or else we ultimate Vraska, which, actually, that's winning the game. Uh, we didn't attack because I just, if they end up hitting here, if they have an answer for this guy then they just kill Vraska. Our plan is to actually ultimate Vraska and then kill them. So. Yep. This feels like an upheaval. Which is pretty brutal. Maybe not? I have no idea what's going on right now. Fast bond. I doubt you would have played that if you had upheaval, right? Or actually, maybe you play all your lands first, and then you upheaval, and then you play all your lands again. But okay, so you're just you just had upheaval the whole time anyway. Oh, I see. Ah, <laughs> yes. Oh boy. Actually, I mean that's fine. It doesn't kill Vraska, right? Oh. Well. That sure is convenient. Cool. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty bad. In before all chat says they can channel us and kill us. Yep. Yeah. Never, never saw channel and guy. All right, well, 
either way, that was pretty sweet. Uh, not too bad for our first run at the Vintage Cube. Uh, I like what we see, so... Uh, maybe we can draw better next time, and maybe we can draft better next time, but I have a feeling power is going to be like our uh, white whale, just like Lyra, Teferi, and Karn. So thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time.